Hi, I'm standing here with 1741 Red Alert at the Greenwood District event. I'm with Grant and Kyle and their new robot that has multiple degrees of freedom as well as different changing lights and a full pass-through method for their robot. All I have to say before we begin, challenge? Accepted. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. So starting off with Kyle, why don't you, uh, you kind of walk us through the lights and kind of your drivetrain? This is your first year trying Swerve, isn't it? Yeah, we're usually a tank-focused uh, team. This is our first time in about uh, six years doing a swerve drive. So this is our robot Tempest. So we come down here to our swerve modules. These are the Mark IV I uh, from SDS. We see our renetization as well as the encoder, so we know uh, placements everything for auto. As well uh, with the LEDs, we have just underglow for aesthetic. And then these indicator lights on the side. So the bottom half will be red for the back side and green for the front side so we know uh, where we'll score and where we'll pick up. And then the top half will be either yellow or purple to indicate to the human player if, if we want a cube or cone. Thank you. Now moving up, it looked like you had multiple different pivots to kind of pick up game pieces from the ground at the different feeder stations. Grant, do you want to walk us through starting with your shoulder joint? Yep. So uh, this joint we call the shoulder. It's our first degree of freedom. It's powered down here by a Neo and a sport gearbox that is run up by a chain. And this provides uh, all the way from here up to here that movement. Up here is what we call the elbow. It's powered in the same way with uh, gears connecting and it's our second degree of movement. Then uh, onto our second arm, we have uh, the gripper which is pneumatically powered right here um, opens and closes and then we call this our wrist it's our final degree of movement and it allows us to rotate back and forth which we'll show a little bit later um, we can show the gripper uh, over here um, so this is a clear um, prototype that shows the pneumatic cylinder the all thread rod and then our 3d printed rack that connects to these gears right here and that's how we open and close on the game piece um, all of these motors have encoders that allow us to accurately read at any point uh, where our robot is, and that goes into some of the programming that we'll show in a little bit, uh, which is how we make this arm work. So our big design philosophy this year was versatility with gameplay, and we wanted to make our robot able to pass through at any time. So that's why uh, we have this open space here, and our robot is able to pick up and place on any side of the, or any side of the robot. That is primarily why we have the wrist, to be able to rotate game pieces to um, their correct orientation. Now we can enable to show some of that pass-through, uh, as well as some of the simulation. So, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Kyle, could you maybe walk us through as we go through the different kind of how you intake and score a game piece? Yep. So when we start, we'll first go to the feeder station. And then this allows us to pick up cones or cubes. And we can go, we call this the home position. It just stores pieces. And then we can flip our wrist either direction. So if we end up scoring from either side, we can just flip the wrist and score. And then this will be for the high cone. And we have a preset position already. So we can just easily place that. And then we can come back and store our arm and ready to uh, get the next cycle. Thank you. Incredible robot, but while talking with you, I learned, you know, a lot of this movement, you didn't want to risk with a physical robot, so you've got a whole simulation set up. Can we take a look at that simulation? Yep. So our uh, programming team spent a lot of time uh, with the simulator this year because uh, with these large movements, we didn't want to risk the mechanical parts. So um, 
we made a fully working sim that we can test all of our movements before and they see uh, whether they're possible um, and kind of how they work. So kind of going through this design, that's just a lot of different ways to move. So why did you focus on trying to pick up and reorient cones rather than just going for straight up cones like a lot of teams have done? Yeah, so this goes into kind of the same reason why we pick Swerve. Like Kyle mentioned, that's a very unique thing for our team. We wanted to be able to maximize the potential of our robot so that it's really up to the driver's skill um, in performing as well as possible. So this allows us to uh, pick up a game piece in uh, a variety of different ways. We primarily use the feeder station, but we can also pick up from the floor, and we can pick up cones that are in any orientation on the floor, given that we're able to rotate them once we get them into our robot. So it's all been about um, just not limiting ourselves mechanically and giving ourselves as many opportunities as we can. Thank you for that. Once again, I'm standing here with Grant and Kyle with Team 1741. Good luck at this event this weekend, and good luck at State next week. Thank you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on, real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.